Welcome everyone. My name is Stephanie Ivick. I'm the Content Marketing Manager here at eLearning Brothers. We have a really exciting event for you today. This is the championship game of our learning and development game tournament. The 11 players here today have all competed over the last four weeks and they each made it to the top of the leaderboard in one of our qualifying games. And today they are competing to win one of three authentic signed guitars. The top three players at the end of today's game will get a guitar and everyone playing today will get an authentic signed album from some of rock's biggest rock stars. But we'll get to that after the game. A few housekeeping items first. We are recording this session. We'll send out a copy to everyone who registered. If you have any questions about the game, about how it works, about e-learning, how much you love e-learning brothers, feel free to put those in the questions panel and we'll get to them throughout. And today, joining me, we have Zach Batty, our Director of Professional Services, who will be hosting the Jeopardy game, and Stephen Baer, Chief Creative Officer at the Game Agency. Stephen's going to tell us a little bit about the Jeopardy game and the Arcades platform, which is what we use to host the entire tournament. And then we'll jump right into the game, because I know that's what you're all here for. Stephen is also going to be sharing his screen so that all of our attendees can see the game. He'll be playing along with the champions, but he's not going to be trying very hard because he is not eligible for prizes. So do not judge him when he gets almost everything wrong. All right. Without further ado, I am going to let Stephen take over. You should have all the power now, Stephen, which I know is what you've been waiting for. I have been. I'm really excited about this. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much. Um, let me close this and open this. Um, just a quick, uh, for those of you who participated or didn't participate, um, we did four weeks of a tournament using our arcades platform, uh, included a variety of topics. And uh, across the topics, we included uh, different types of learning content uh, and ultimately games, lots, lots and lots of games. And a uh, special thanks to everyone who's participating today because um, you guys not only uh, jumped in, uh, and but you jumped in big time and came back over and over again and really made it a priority to uh, learn as much as you can and rise to the occasion. Um, so for those who are not familiar with the platform, Arcades allows you to uh, deliver a whole bunch of different uh, content in the form of individual content, short missions, large learning journeys, you can use um, PDFs, videos, games. Uh, you can uh, give uh, badges, points, leaderboard status, and prizes. And so we're super excited about um, how we use it here. And we wanted to show you, in our opinion, a great way to actually engage people, and certainly did. Um, so without further ado, we'll be playing Jeopardy. Um, Zach, Zach will be leading the board. Um, and you'll see that uh, all these contestants will be playing. Um, everyone basically has access to play, um, you know, among these folks, um, and it will be a head-to-head -head competition. And what's really neat about this is, is that um, while Zach will basically push it to everyone's screen, I'll be showing you my screen, as Stephanie said, uh, ultimately it's about um, everybody's speed and accuracy, and ultimately how much they are confident enough to wager. So without further ado, Zach, over to you. Uh, thanks very much. Just just a little bit more further ado. I'm showing Allison. I don't know that you've registered yet for the game, and I would hate to get started without you, especially with that amazing eye makeup. That needs to be called out. That's fantastic. Uh, also, while we're waiting for that, just, uh, just a little surprise that people didn't know about. I felt that some of the guitars were just missing a little something, so I went ahead and signed all of them also. Uh, I hope that's okay with everybody. Let's and it added signature to the certificate of authenticity too, just so I know it was you. Oh I yeah, I printed one a new one of those up uh, that'll be added to. So okay, perfect. Allison, I see that you're in. So let's go ahead and get the game started. For those of you who might be doing this or watching this at home, right now I've muted all of the players' audio, but typically there's some great music going on here. And 
let's just go ahead and get started because I know that everybody is really excited. Uh, let's see, Savita, I'm showing that you were the first one to get registered. So let me just go over the categories here. We have learning design, learner engagement, target audience, and virtual reality. Savita, the board is yours. Get us started, please. Let's do learning engagement 200, please. Learning engagement for 200. What kind of engagement might we be talking about here? Let's show the clue. This powerful strategy provides context, emotional connects, uh, <laughs> emotionally connects learners to the training and encourages empathy. Is it storytelling, knowledge check, click to reveal, or lecture? Looks like 11 have answered. All 12 have answered. The correct answer is storytelling. And I'm showing that Wes was the first person to answer that correctly. Wes, where should we go? Uh, let's go target audience for a thousand. Go big. Target audience, holy smokes, Wes is going for the bleachers. Target audience. That little picture there is going to give you kind of an idea of what we might talk about. Most young people entering the workforce prefer this type of training. Answers include instructor-led training, formal workplace e-learning, regular frequent micro-learning, training manuals, or you can write in TikTok, whichever you prefer. All right. The correct answer, regular frequent micro-learning. And Maki, you were first. So where would you like to go? Let's do learning design for 600. Learning design for 600. Always, you can always tell when poor design has happened. So hopefully what can we do for good design? An effective course at Blueprint starts with this important first step. Is it naming the course, designing the user interface, defining performance goals or objectives, or researching the topics? Nine of you have already answered. Ten of you have already answered. And the correct answer is Defining performance goals or objectives. Always something good to keep in mind. Samantha, you were first on that one. After this, we'll show the leaderboard, but Samantha, tell us where to go, please. Let's go learning design for 800. Learning design for eight. Clearly with two monitors, that person must be a designer. The clue is, Use this living collection of standardized templates to streamline course design. Would that be the project plan, Bloom's taxonomy, instructional team meetings, or storyboard design system? Eight of you feel confident about that answer so far. And the correct answer is the storyboard design system. All right, let's go back to the board here and uh, let me show the leaderboard. Oh, we have a tie. <laughs> Maki, Samantha, Alice, good heavens. Uh, that's a that's a lot of ties. So let's get back to the game. Actually, let's uh, let's take a minute and Wes, just because 
you're the one that isn't typing first. Tell us about yourself. Where are you from? How'd you get into e-learning? Um, I live in Utah, late in Utah. I was originally in sales, got my undergraduate from Weber State. And I really like sales as far as educating and creating solutions for our customers. However, I got sick of being thought of as a liar the entire time. No matter what you did, it was always you're out to get the, the customer, you know, the bad guy. So I found out about instructional design and creative designing and finding problems or solutions to problems that they just can't figure out and how to make not want to kill yourself. And so I just kind of got into that and got my master's degree in this. Year. Perfect. Well, we're certainly glad you switched industries. Uh, heavens knows we don't need any more salespeople. I say that because I also used to be a salesperson. Um, let's go back. Uh, Mark, you were the first one on that last question. So the board is yours. Where would you like to go? Okay, let's do 800 learner engagement. 800 for learner engagement. That is someone who you want to be engaged in learning. Anybody with a stethoscope is important. The clue is, this encourages learners to reflect on their choices, which helps improve retention. Possible answers include feedback, job aid, competition, or animation. Four of you right out of the gate, six of you out of the gate. And just a little bit longer to answer that one. Okay, the correct answer is feedback. Uh, incidentally, I'm not taking the time to, to read the correct answer feedback, but as you can imagine, that's something that's 100% editable in the game, and you can add that message uh, to your learners to really, well, give them some good feedback. See what I did there? Hey, Zach, on that, on that topic, it's probably worth mentioning that um, while you're not sharing the back end, you can see the speed in which people are answering. You can also see how quick, uh, how many people are getting it right or wrong. So when we think about using this forum for uh, Jeopardy or for instructional-led training, it's a great opportunity to say, hey, notice that 50% of this room don't understand this concept or, you know, answer differently. Let's take a moment and reflect on that, right? So it's... Um, it's it's not strictly for competition, but really um, to use as a teaching tool and understand when people know um, the right stuff and when there's need for a group review. Perfect. All right, uh, getting back to that. Allison, you were the first one to answer that one. Tell us what you'd like. All right, let's do virtual reality 400. Opening up the virtual reality category. 400, oh my goodness, you got a daily double. Really all of us got the daily double. So you can decide now how much you'd like to wager. Go ahead and slide that counter back and forth. My friend Steven is keeping it safe at 195. Oh, was I allowed to say that out loud? I didn't ruin it. Like we're waiting for two people, one person. Almost there. All right, all 12 of you have submitted your wager. Let's go to the clue. It's a mine doing virtual reality. The clue is holodeck coming soon. You can currently use one of these devices to experience a virtual reality course. Possible answers. Oh, oh I'm sorry, this is a keyboard entry. So for those of you listening on the webinar, uh, you can have, of course, short answer, and the, you can have multiple spellings, so you can take into account different typos, especially if you have an individual like me playing the game, that's going to be important. And it looks like... Hey, I just, um, it just like locked out my answer. I went to type and it went gray. Is there any way to reset Same. that? Is it because you ran out of time? Probably. I think, I think so. It is still a time question. I buy money. 
Oh, okay. You'll notice, by the way, on the bottom of the screen, yes. it basically has a red light, and as when that ends, time ends. Okay, let's go for the correct answer. The correct answer is desktop. Okay. You can use a desktop device to experience virtual reality course. Let's go back to the board here and just show the leaderboard. Awesome. <laughs> and it looks like uh, that question helped thin out the tie. It's now, although it's anybody's game because Final Jeopardy, as, as many of you I'm sure have seen the game show, works with a wager. So right now the top three are Allison, Chris, and Savita. That answer, however, was answered the fastest by Wes. So, Wes, where would you like to go? Uh, let's stick with VR and go 800. 800, virtual reality. Uh, what might this picture give us a clue of? Virtual reality captures 100% of a user's Wait, what were you saying? Possible answers include attention, data, emotions, or reaction. Eleven have answered so far. Just a little bit longer. All right, the correct answer is attention. The immersive nature of VR captures 100% of the learner's attention. Wes, you were fastest again on that one. Take it away. Uh, switch gears. Target audience, 400. Target audience for 400. Hmm. Perhaps a demographic question. Your more experienced learners probably prefer more of this. Is it group work, PowerPoint e-learning, autonomy, or YouTube videos? Four of you out of the gate felt confident answering that question. Okay, the correct answer is autonomy. Although those others were very intriguing. Yes. And for the record, I'm going to start referring to, I like that, uh, experienced learners. That's a great, safe term. Lori, you were the first one to answer that question correctly. <laughs> Where, uh, the board's yours. Uh, let's go to learning design for 200. Learning design 200. A puzzle completely made of white pieces. That's going to keep you busy for a while. Who is use this to visually lay out all of the course content in a logical order? Is it storyboard, objectives matrix, prototype, or appendix? Last little bit. All right, the correct answer is a storyboard. Let's go back to the board. Heidi, you're going to be the one to choose, but let's just take a break and show the leaderboard real quick. And now that all ties have been broken, Allison is sitting at the lead with Chris chomping at her heels. However, again, it is anybody's game because of Final Jeopardy. So, Heidi, where would you uh, like let's, to Let's go with Learning Design 400. Learning Design 400. Hmm. Lots of pieces of paper. As your vision comes to life, this is a good middle step between a basic storyboard and full development. Is it overlay, prototype, Gold Master 
or visual paradigm. Could possibly the correct answer be anything having to do with gold? No, <laughs> is the correct answer. And Mary, you were the first one to give that answer correctly. Woohoo. All right, let's go with um, target audience 800. Target audience for 800. Okay, group of people having a great time. Know your audience. This key trait should drive your learning design. Could it be experience level, age, generation, or social media presence? Seven of you have dialed in already. The correct answer is experience level. However, social media presence, you don't want to mess up with a uh, social warrior. So just be careful on that one. That's something to be aware of. Heidi, back to you. Um, let's go learning design 1000. Learning design 1000. Like we've got somebody taking some e-learning there. An online learning experience should be this. So as many people as possible can participate, including people with disabilities. Another short answer. So again, you've got this time bar on the bottom. Five of you have answered. Just a few seconds left. Hopefully you accounted for spelling uh, capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer is accessible. Uh, so well done to uh, many of you. Samantha, you were the first one. So we just have a couple questions left, Samantha. Which one would you like? How about learner engagement for a thousand? Only taking one of the last 2,000 things available. That's the type of face you want when someone's taking your e-learning course. These fun and sometimes competitive learning challenges boost attention, engagement, and retention. Knowledge checks, e-learning courses, podcasts, or learning games. Of you have, 11 of you have answered. All right. The correct answer is learning games. Well done. Heidi, you were the first one to answer that. So take it away. Um, let's do the other 1,000 virtual reality. Heidi's playing strategically. Hopefully, that's not during surgery that that picture was taken. <laughs> Among other things, virtual reality allows learners to learn from these without real life repercussions. Possible answers include travels, mistakes, resources, and experts. That one was uh, responded to very quickly by all of you. The correct answer is mistakes. And 100% of you got that correct. Wes, you were the first one. However, before we get into this, let's just show the leaderboard real quick. Allison's still on top. Chris, Wes, Lori are all broke the 9,000. But remember, it's still anybody's game. A lot can happen. 
Wes, take it away. Sorry, my heart is still beating on the last one. Um, let's go VR for six. <laughs> Just Sorry, on the last one, huh? <laughs> virtual reality was 600? Yeah. All right. That's, that's what an epiphany looks like. Move over, hot cross buns. The realism of virtual reality adds this element to learning, to e-learning. Oops, I forgot to show the answers. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. Answers include conflict, scaffolding, distraction, and sticky learning. You were just adding to the suspense on that one, huh? Yeah, I just really wanted to make it stick. The correct answer is Sticky learning. And Mary answered that one the fastest. Mary, which question do you like? All right, let's finish up virtual reality for 200. Let's clean out that category. Uh, fun fact that was pointed out in the chat all of these images come from the e learning brothers stock asset library. So you can add that or you can add your own images, whichever you prefer. Hey, Zach, can you add anything besides images? I'm glad you asked. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can add video clips. You can add audio clips. Um, and, and I have one more question. Sorry to interrupt you, but can you put uh, images not just before the questions, but also after the feedback, like for advanced feedback or something like that? Uh, I believe that you can. Yes, Stephen. Is that true? Yeah, it is true. So the oh. cool thing is, is that we we wanted to have not only um, corrective feedback, right or wrong, but then if you want to use this as a further teaching point, you can put in images or video after that to reinforce the point and you know use it as part of the classroom experience. So yeah, it absolutely is true. Thank you for confirming that. I appreciate that. Yes, that means I get 200 points. That counts for me. Uh, use these types of images to create 360 degree virtual reality scenes. Cube, lo-fi, spherical, or holographic? The correct answer is spherical. It's a, uh, it's a growing industry that's just Fun to watch like virtual reality. That one, uh, Allison, you answered that correctly first. We're on mute. Um, okay, target audience for 600. Target audience for 600. I don't know if this would be more suspenseful with music or without. It's kind of intense, guys. You know, that's a good point, and, and I should bring that up. So normally, if you're playing, um, the administrator, in this case me, has the ability to, to mute or unmute all the player audio. Because, because we're all sharing each other's audio, we decided to mute it so that the, we're not getting the uh, game sounds 12 different times at a half beat off. But just know that if you really are playing virtually, normally there is music going, things like that. So. I'm okay if someone wants to hum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Zach, did you did you not get my memo before this that you were supposed to be singing the music for everyone? That's a that's a totally different contract that needs to be signed. I don't think humming was included. In this. Yeah, I spoke to your boss and he said that you would absolutely do that. Definitely. Talk well, about while, while Zach's thinking about humming, a little known fact is the fact that we um, are switching out the music soon. Right now we have. Uh, music that we did uh, custom for this, but we are going to be uh, putting in the uh, theme music or the think music that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that will be coming in um, in a matter of weeks. So super exciting for that. Which I think it's worth pointing out also that this is the only licensed Jeopardy game on the market, so we can have that authentic music and that type of thing. So nice. And if you haven't checked out um, Wheel of Fortune, you should too. Um, we'll send it around to anybody uh, who hasn't seen it. It's 
phenomenal. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, uh, back to the game. That was a great note from our sponsors. If you want to boost learner engagement, answer this question. What should they know? What should they do? When should they learn? How should they feel? Nine of you have answered. The correct answer is, how should they feel if you want learner engagement? Mary, you were first on that one. Yay. What would you like? Uh, let's do target audience for 200. Target audience for 200. The clue is the number of distinct generations in the current workforce. And this is a free answer. Seven of you, nine of you have wagered a guess. 11, 12 for 12. The correct answer is five. Tradition, I never, I didn't know that that's what pre-baby boomers were called. Traditionalists, baby boomers, Gen X, millennials, and Gen Z. There Mind the gap. Yeah. <laughs> Mary. That's how I got in this game. That's impressive. Yes. Good good call. Mary, you answered that in two seconds, making you the quickest. Which would you like? Uh, let's go learner engagement for 600. Learner engagement for 600. Yeah. You know, true story. My wife used to get in trouble as a as a little girl for staying up past bedtime reading under the blankets. He's clearly much more intelligent than I am. Tension increases during this part of the story arc, which involves a series of conflicts and challenges. Possible answers, the plot, the rising action, exposition, and conflict resolution. Eight of 12 have answered, 10 of 12. The correct answer is the rising action. Mary, you were the first one to answer correctly. Just well, for the I, sake of I will take the 400, I guess. Okay, good choice. I would have done the same thing. Uh, Huh, I wonder if they're supposed to be wearing safety glasses. Maybe that's part of the e-learning that they missed. Learning experience design differs from instructional design because it is primarily focused on this. Possible answers include content, grades, learning by doing, and knowledge transfer. Correct answer is learning by doing. All right, there are no more questions left in this round. As the leaderboard stands, everybody is still, I mean, there is a there is no runaway here. Allison, Chris, and Wes are take up the top three spaces. And Really, it comes down to final jeopardy. Let's dismiss the leaderboard. As you all know, the way that it works is you will make a uh, you will make a wager. The category is your capacity to learn. Feel free to be strategic. 
12 out of 12 of you have made the wager. The question having to do with your capacity to learn is, remember this magic number to limit cognitive overload and improve retention. Possible answers, three plus or minus two, five plus or minus two, seven plus or minus two, or nine plus or minus two. All right, if we are ready to move forward, is everybody sitting down is everybody getting ready for this i mean this is kind of the big shebang here the correct answer is uh, seven plus or minus two all right it comes down to does anybody want to say anything before we reveal the board i mean does anybody want to apologize to anybody there, there wasn't a lot of trash talking which was fantastic is that right? Right. <laughs> say again Wes. Oh, is there a prize for last place? Well, oh, probably a tie for last place. <laughs> it's a little late for trash talking, but I hope you all got that wrong. <laughs> Don't forget that every one of you gets a signed album. That's uh, awesome. So yeah, so that's exciting. Okay, let's go back to the board. And Chris. Chris takes it with twenty thousand eight hundred dollars. Nice Chris. Heidi with thirteen one fifteen, and third is Savita with eleven eight thirteen. And and just an honorable mention to Mary, Caleb, and Lori for just going for the gusto. I mean, just going all out. You got to respect that. Uh, Stephanie, let me turn it back to you for the award ceremony. If I understood that correctly. Yes, we have awards and we are going to pick them out right now. So I need to share my screen. Oh, let's see. Taking the power back from you, Stephen. All right, so as, I know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll bring you back for another webinar. You, you, you behaved pretty well this time, so I guess, guess I could consider it. So as a reminder, our three grand prizes, authentic signed guitars. There's one from ACDC, one from Aerosmith, and one from Guns N' Roses. But to really draw out the suspense, before I let our top three winners choose their guitars, we are going to go through the albums. So how this works is, Basically, the winner of the first qualifying game, which was all about storyboarding, Chris, he is going to get to pick his album first. And then the winner of the second game will pick theirs from the remaining albums and so on and so on until everybody has an awesome album except for Stephen and Zach. We do not get albums. So, and I will, with this handy dandy, pen feature. Can everybody see that? I'll be crossing out albums as they're taken so that there's no fighting over albums. So Chris, these are your choices. We've got Van Halen, The Eagles, ACDC, Bon Jovi, U2, Guns N' Roses, Kiss, Tina Turner, Whitesnake, Survivor, and Bob Dylan. Which authentic autographed album? I know it's a tough decision. <clears throat> I'm the worst at making decisions. Ask my family when it comes time to find out what we're going to have for takeout. I'm going to take um, uh, the Eagles, Eagles Hotel California. All right. Great choice. I mean, there's all no great bad choices. choice, but yeah. excellent choice. Now, Maki, which album would you like? I will go for the Bob Dylan. All right. Also an excellent choice. And Heidi. I'm going to go with you, too. 
I was going to say excellent choice again, but I think you guys will get tired of me saying that after everyone. So we'll just keep it snappy. <laughs> Samantha, which album would you like? ACDC. All right. And Lori. Van Halen. Okay, there we go. Yes. And, you know, these are just uh, appreciation for all your hard work throughout the four weeks of the tournament. You guys were the, the best of the best. So, yeah, we're pretty excited about it. Let's see. Mike, you are next. I will go with probably Guns N' Roses. All right. All right. I would do some, like, pithy comment about song lyrics, but to be honest, I'm more of a country girl, so we're just going to keep going on. <laughs> Wes, you get the next choice. Um. All the ones I was thinking are gone, so I don't know the others as well. Let's go with White Snake. All right. Great choice. Great choice. Caleb, you are next. I'll do Kiss. Awesome. And Mary? <laughs> uh, my family has a thing with Eye of the Tiger, so I have to get, I'm so glad that one's still there. <laughs> yeah, we saved it just for you. Yeah, we saved it just for you. I messaged everyone else. So I was like, don't take Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. And, you I know, they were really that. kind. <laughs> they were very kind, yeah, to do that Thank for you. Everybody. Allison, you are next. I thought it went without saying I was going to take the kiss one, but I'm just kidding. Oh, sorry. I forgot um, to send out a memo about that. <laughs> bon Jovi. Awesome. And Savita, I think it's it's going to be a tough choice for you. It is. It's really hard for me to decide between them all. Um, I think I'll take Tina Turner, though. <laughs> Great choice. Great choice. That is fantastic. And we we have your mailing addresses already, so we'll be sending these out to you. They do come with certificates. I promise that Zach did not sign any of these. So you are safe. And now. Are you guys ready? So just as a reminder, Zach, our top three players. This is a test to see if you were paying attention. I believe yeah. it is Chris, Heidi, and Savita. Is that correct? That is correct. A uh, few. That was going to be really awkward if I got it wrong. All right. So these are, oh, I didn't, I didn't advance to my next slide. Just uh, hold. Oh, it's because I'm still on the pen. I thought I was really slick, guys. Here we go. These are your guitars that you are choosing from. And so this works kind of the same way. The top player, Chris, is going to get first choice, then Heidi, and then Savita. Again, you have the really tough decision at the end. <laughs> I actually appreciate it. It gives me less thinking to do. I'm kind of with Chris. <laughs> That's true. I mean, they're all awesome, so you really can't go wrong. And Chris, the the one who doesn't like making decisions, uh, you actually, get for, first choice again. Yeah, for this one, it's it, for me. It's easy. It's ACDC all for this group. All right. Awesome. Look, I'm really stepping up my pointer game here. It's pretty good. It's pretty slick. Yes, I think I'm going to get a raise just from this pointer game. I think you should. All right. It's my boss on this call. Heidi, you are next. I'm going to go with Aerosmith. All right. Awesome choice. I'm really glad you all have short names. And <laughs> Savita, we're just going to do a nice S and a smiley face for you. <laughs> nice. I like it. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. So you guys have this to look forward to. We are so glad that you all participated and played. Congratulations. You are all winners in our hearts. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that for all of you on the call, if you want to make an awesome Jeopardy game for your company, we do offer a free trial, which I posted a link to in the chat. And we are happy if you want to just call us right up and get a subscription today, you can do that as well. And I'll just double check and make sure there were no questions. Nope. 
Zach and Stephen, you answered all the questions beautifully during the call. So thank you all so much for participating. This has been absolutely fantastic. We hope to see you on future webinars and at future conferences. And everybody have a great rest of your day. Thank you.